Hello and welcome back once again. I've entitled today's video, Self-Hosting, Keeping Track of Things. So once you start self-hosting more than a few services, it's inevitable that you're going to have some outages. Brian at Open Source is Awesome identified a way to organize all of your Docker container YAML files and the external folders for persistent data into folders that you can back up on a regular basis. Brian also has a virtual machine that runs Portainer Agent and his Docker container instances. This design can be leveraged by running Proxmox with multiple VMs of the same design and creating a rancher cluster. So what do I do in my environment? Well, I self-host 40 plus containers on two QNAP systems. Uh, one of them is a TS-877 and the other is a TS-1277. Most of my containers are Lex-C, Lex-D. I like to install all of the components of an application rather than making use of a Docker image. And I focus on that in my video entitled Anatomy of a Self-Hosted Application where I install File Run, which is a replacement for Google Drive. This provides an easy means to update to newer versions of apps. This also compartmentalizes databases for each application, providing an easier means to update. And what, part of the reason for that is because sometimes components get updates or security patches, and we want to update those before we wait for a new version of an application to be released. Since each app is a dedicated Lexi LexD container in my environment, no one outage can take everything down. So let's look at what I've done in detail. Well, first of all, I think you need a power strategy, and this is true if you host more than one or two things. I have a rack mount UPS for my home lab rack, which is a 1500 volt damp, 900 watt UPS unit. I also use desk side UPS units, and I typically use a 1500 volt amp, 900 watt uh, desk side unit as well. I have several of them um, hosting my other things that are outside of the rack. So UPS units are good for power surges, sags, and brief outages. And we're looking at covering a system for 15 to 30 minutes. If you have an extensive power outage that's for hours, then basically you're going to want a motor generator or something along that line if you really need to keep your systems up and running. The 15 to 30 minutes gives you a good amount of time to be able to do an orderly shutdown and not corrupt anything. So what do we want to protect? Well, in a home lab, we want higher availability. So UPS would be in front of cable modems, routers, switches, and host computers. Supplemental cooling may be an issue even in short, short outages. Want to consider that. Too many home labs end up using repurposed older enterprise class servers like HP Enterprise ProLiant DL380s. I mean, these are great servers, but the problem is lots of power draw equates to lots of heat. So use lower power servers and lower power storage. There's one exception to that rule, and that's if you're doing cryptocurrency mining. So let's look at my applications. On the screen right now, what you're seeing is you're seeing an image of my Heimdall um, web server interface. This is an interface that gives me um, a clickable way to access all of my self-hosted applications on my desktop. Um, we'll just go through briefly what all of these are here. So I use Bitwarden, which is a self-hosted password manager and it also does two-factor authentication. Marvelous application, can't say enough good about it. I have two WireGuard instances, and these were covered in my WireGuard um, WG Easy video that I just completed. The first one is a WireGuard uh, portal that accesses everything on my net, and the other one is a WireGuard portal that specifically connects into my LabNet VLAN. Then I have two applications here, CryptPad and PondDrop, that are good for file transfer via web browser. I use SyncThing, and SyncThing is an absolutely fantastic product that does uh, versioning 
uh, file sync between various devices. It's a peer-to-peer -peer, uh, type of device. So I maybe sync certain uh, folders between my laptop, my desktop, my phone, uh, my NASes, that sort of thing. Um, Mesh, Mesh Central is a great product that's used for managing computers on your network and watching computer instances. Um, it's worth a look at. We can do a whole video on that for sure. Um, <clears throat> remotely is um, kind of what I see as the open source uh, solution or replacement for TeamViewer. And I really like the way it works. Jitsi is uh, a basically an open source replacement for Zoom. I use it to uh, help a lot of uh, external people when I'm trying to show them how to do something. And then my network is mostly composed of um, uh, Ubiquity Unify equipment. And so this is a link to the Ubiquity Unify um, uh, software defined networking program to give me the dashboard for all of my equipment. So I have their routers, their switches, their access points, all that sort of thing. Monitor is an application we're going to get up for in a minute. It's a, it's, a, uh, it's a monitor program. And then VMS Cloud and VMS Fog are simply the GUI interfaces into my QNAP NASes. QVR Pro is my QNAP NAS based um, NVR, Network Video Recording Program for my cameras. My cameras, um, I use a whole series of uh, Reolink uh, uh, PoE cameras, most of which are 2K cameras. I have one 4K camera. Um, I don't use Home Assistant, but I do use a private-based, a private based, um, non-cloud solution called Hubitat Elevation, which I really like. And then, Hub, and then WebCore is actually a uh, coding language that I use in cooperation with my Hubitat to do some of my more complex automations. I run a Plex Media server. I run Tatuli, which monitors my Plex Media server statistics. I run Apache Guacamole, which is really a great program if you don't want to do a VPN on your network. It allows people to connect remotely into particular servers and really implement a VDI, virtual desktop interface servers, if so desired. I use a couple of pie holes. There's one pie hole on my main LAN. There's one pie hole on my IoT VLAN. And pie hole is a, uh, a network-wide ad blocker that's basically an intermediary uh, DNS for your local network. I have a uh, uh, web server that operates to trap motion events on my front porch. Um, it's a lot of fun. Uh, my wife likes to feed the neighborhood cats in the evening. We uh, get a chance to see them, and we also get a chance to see some possums. And last night, two raccoons showed up, so that was kind of fun. Cameras and other cameras are Hubitat dashboards that um, gain time-lapse images of my various cameras I have. Nginx Proxy Manager is the front end for, uh, for reverse proxy for all of your services. Uh, there's a lot of videos about that. I think we've talked about that. Um, <clears throat> Bookstack is a wiki, and it allows you to do basically what Wikipedia does. You can create pages and documents and, and, uh, and chapters. Um, my website is here. It's a WordPress website. Um, even though this one over here has a WordPress icon, it's not really WordPress. It's uh, my older bulletin board, which is um, community.scottabyte.com. And what it is, is it is a uh, PHP bulletin board server. Um, and then Scottabyte Discussion is my discourse server. And then I have a Nextcloud server. I use my Nextcloud server primarily to sync my Joplin, which is a self-hosted notes-taking application. Here I have the, the, uh, my Rocket Chat, which I've announced before, is chat.scottabyte.com. Uh, here I have an internal speed test tool. I have Jellyfin, which is another media server, but I predominantly use it uh, for my live TV inside and outside the house. And uh, both my Plex server and my Jellyfin server talk to a um, silicone dust HD home run connect 4K tuner with uh, attic antenna. 
And then Shinobi is, uh, is another NVR program that's open source, but I use Shinobi mainly to monitor my cameras and not really to record anything. Files is a great files pro, uh, portal. It's a lot like CryptPad or PondDrop, but you don't need any um, any particular uh, accounts to use it. Uh, it's um, it's just a real convenient. I want to send somebody a file in a hurry thing, and it's web based and sends them an email. And over here, I have a link for Brian's open source Rocket Chat because you can put anything you want in the Heimdall menu. And then I have self-hosted instances of a uh, web-based whiteboard and also, in my own instance, of Draw.io. So how do I monitor my systems? Well, I use a product called Monitor, and it has two R's on the end if you're interested. It's a Docker instance, and this is an example dashboard of it. It monitors all of my services. It either uses web page access or pings. You can select which to monitor given services. So like, for example, in the beginning here, I've got Cloudflare. And the reason I'm monitoring Cloudflare is because if Cloudflare were to be down, I would consider that my internet connection was out. And then uh, lots of other things here. I've got Hoogle. Um, Brian's done a video on Hoogle before. Um, it's a, uh, it's a uh, privacy-centric front end to Google searches that I host on the network. Uh, and then we've got really everything else that I mentioned on the previous screen, um, along with uh, a couple of extra additions here. Uh, one of the things that I have um, is uh, another PHP bulletin board server that is on the dark web. And I actually have a video out there that talks about it. It's self-hosting on the dark side. So what do I do for data protection? Well, SyncThing handles keeping the last five versions of files in key folders. QNAP Container Station exports create tar archives for my LexC, LexD containers. QNAP volume snapshots cover really major failures on the system if I accidentally were to delete a large branch of something. RAID 6 allows for two drives to fail in my 8-drive array and not lose any data. I also have a hot spare in there. And monitor log files, and build automations to track and report errors. That's very important. It, your, your level of monitoring kind of depends on what your needs are. And then finally, if none of the above work, just pray. So there's no right way to self-host. Everyone will do it differently. Do some upfront planning to avoid problems later and have fun. Anyway, thanks so much for watching today, and please subscribe and like if you like what you see. We'll see you on down the road the next time.